We don't need to sit down and wait on nothing. We just need to keep on following God. And let Him lead us. Amen? And that's what God wants us to do. God, read that with me. He knows who 
you need. And we're trusting Him, praying about it, growing that, and obeying God, and believing God. God's going to send you a pastor that's going to blow you away. Amen. God will provide a way out. Read that with me. God will provide a way out. Now let's get a hold of that truth. These people were in a dilemma. I mean a dilemma. God brought them out. Now let's flip over into the 15th chapter. Watch this. <coughs> Moses led Israel from the Red Sea right out into the middle of the desert. Now can you envision being in the middle of a parched desert? Two million people with children, teenagers, moms, senior adults, middle-aged adults, and livestock. Now you're out there in this desert. For three days they were traveling trying to find some water. I've never been in a place, but when I was in Korea, I did. I, I couldn't get a hold of any water. And believe me, when you get thirsty, you'll do just about anything to take a drink. But here they were, out in the desert. No water. Now they're in another dilemma. You would think they'd be this high as a kite spiritually and say, God's going to do anything. He can bring water right up out of the ground. They just came through the Red Sea. Now they're in another dilemma. We want water, they said to the pastor. <laughs> Moses, we want water. Everybody thinks the pastor has got the answers for everything. Where's he going to get the water? Listen to what they said. Did you bring us out here in this desert? To let all of us die of thirst. Here their children were without water, their tongues were swelling, their lips were parched. I mean, you're talking serious stuff here. And here they were wanting the water. They didn't have a place to get it. And Moses, you know, he's a good pastor. And Moses, I'm sure, probably fell on his face and he said, Oh God. He said, I'm so inadequate. I, I don't know what I'm going to do. He said, what in the world am I going to do? He said, these people are about to kill me now. And look what he said. They drank of water from Moriah and found that it was good. It was bitter water. Moses didn't know what to do. The water was bitter and they couldn't drink it. And then there's all that much more confusion in Mac. Can you imagine all that Tommy Rock going on? Moses was praying. Now watch this carefully. Simplistic stuff. But Moses had to obey God to get an answer. And you and I do too. Watch it. The Lord said to Moses, there he is. He said, get your pocket knife out. Go over here and cut this limb off this tree. Now isn't that something? That's profound. Man. Just cut this limb off this tree. And I want you to throw it in the water. You don't mean that, do you? Yes, I do. I haven't had a chance to be there. It's just it's difficult. And so Moses did exactly what God told him to do. And the bitter water, read that with me, and the Now what does that mean to you and I today? What does that mean to you and me? How that we're going to relate that? How are we going to put that in our daily application of Christian living? You just watch that. The blessed Lord does that for you and me. He does that. Watch this. He takes the bitter experiences of life that we go through, and if you're breathing, you've gone through something. Amen? And when they are touched by the branch of the cross, the bitter is made sweet. Hallelujah to God. Remember how he touched Peter in the jail with blood running down his back and Peter was singing amazing grace, how sweet the sound, and God came in there and shut that jail and delivered Simon Peter and took him away and gave him peace in the midst of a storm. Amen. Y'all all right out there? Look at verse 27. I'm just trying to preach the Bible to you this morning and give you a little hope. Then as they 
of aid Moses. <coughs> See, let me tell you something about your new pastor, whomever it is. If you can't get a pastor in here that you can follow, don't call him. If you get a pastor in here, you let him lead you as God leads him, and you'll be a blessed individual. Amen? As they obeyed Moses, their pastor, they went a little farther. Oh, I love this verse. Look what happened. They went down to a little place called Elam, and there they found 12 springs of water. God always does exceedingly abundantly above all that we could ask or think. And he gave them 70 shade trees in a desert. Can you imagine that? Um, you can't just imagine them. Well, that's what he did. They found shade and they found water to drink. Why? Because the Lord always provides for us. Hallelujah. I get excited about that, people. Get excited about the God of the Jehovah God that lives on the inside of your body if you're saved and sanctified holy. Now, if you're not a Christian, you can't get in on what I'm in on. I don't need an artificial high to get me up spiritually. Y'all be all with me this morning? Now, here's another. They came from the desert. No water. Now they came through the wilderness again. One crisis after another. Watch this. Exodus 16, 3. Write it down. They said to Moses, here they go again, Pastor, we're hungry. Our, my children are hungry. I'm hungry, and there's nothing to eat. We want bread. Where was Moses supposed to get bread? I'm talking about two million people plus livestock. You think we don't serve an awesome God? Did you bring us out of here to kill us? We don't have anything to eat. Look what verse 4 says. Read verse 4 with me. Savior of the whole world. Great Savior. 
He not only provides a way out, but he provides for us every day. I don't, I don't have to worry one. I don't worry about anything. I personally, God showed me this years ago, worry is a sin. Worry is not trusting God. Why should I worry or fret when God's leading my life? But I've got to have God in my heart. I've got to make sure my sins are under the blood. I've got to make sure that I'm obeying God and reading it. I'm going to tell you something. Y'all listen up to me now. I'm going to meddle this that much. Look at the person's hat. He's thinking about metal a little bit. If you have a closed Bible, if you don't read your Bible every day, and spend time alone with God every day, you're not going to hear from God like God wants to touch you. Most people don't read their Bible every day, and they don't meditate and think about God every day. You need some quiet time with the Father. Now, you need to get that quiet time, and that's hard to do, but you need to find a way to spend a little bit of time alone with the Father. I learned this the other day. I've been at this 50 years and I'm still learning. Kay, she goes in her prayer closet with her Bible, my wife here. She's got a prayer book about that fit with name that she put on her. It takes her at least an hour and 45, two hours to pray for everybody on that prayer list every day. Five days a week. That's how many days I got a place in my office in my home. I can go in there and I can be alone with God. And let me say this to you, just parenthetically. You listen to me. You say you get on your knees and pray, and we're usually giving God our grocery list. Our our praying to God is secondary. Let me explain that just in a brief moment. It's what God says to us is primary. We sometimes can tell God what we want Him to do. We got it all figured out. We know what needs to be done. And then we'll get up and go on our way without ever hearing what He has to say. God still is speaking God. And He's got a, he's got a plan for each one of our lives. He knows what He wants us to do. And if we'll take time to listen to Him, He'll help us along the way. Are you with me this morning? He'll provide all the way. That's why I love this great hymn. I know Bill does. I think I've heard the same. Great is thy faithfulness. Wow, I love that. Morning by morning, new mercies I see. All I need. Say that with me. people 
people were out there with him. They went through the Red Sea. They went through thirst. They went through hunger. I'm talking about children and husbands and wives and senior adults that couldn't hardly walk, moving on in that, that two million people plus their livestock. And Moses said to uh, God said to Moses, tell the people to go forward and move on. And he said to the Carrollton Church, go forward, move on. Amen. Let me tell you something, people. I, per, I can't prove this, but personally, I really trust, believe that we're living in a, in a Saturday evening time. I think the world is about to come to an end. I really do. But I, I want you to get some urgency and a spring in your step. Get a smile on your face. Don't look like a Missouri mule when you come to church. Even if you have to fake it, smile and shake hands with somebody. When you shake hands with somebody, it's like shaking hands with a piece of liver. <laughs> no. Give some joy, some enthusiasm, some zeal, some zest. And let God work through you to bring honor and glory to Him. Amen. Y'all all right out there? Yes. Look at the person beside you and say, I just love Jesus. I love Jesus. Don't you enjoy God? I think God's got something in store for this church. Don't try to figure it out by the end of a pencil. Don't try to figure it out by programs. God knew how many people around lived around this church 120 years ago or longer. All He wants us to do is walk in the light. And if you don't read your Bible, you're not going to know how to walk. Walk in the light. <coughs> Trust the Lord with all your heart. Trust Him. Sometimes it's easy to say what it's hard to do. Proverbs 3 5 says, Trust in the Lord. Lord, with all your heart, and lean not upon your own understanding. What's it? But in all. What's the Greek word for all? All. all. With all of your heart. Trust Him with all your heart. And that's, that's how you go help you. He wants to help you personally. He wants to help you with the family. He wants to help you in the church. He wants, he wants the people in this area or wherever it could be. He wants the people here to know that He's alive and well in your body in this church and in this community. And when you come into the church and you're filled with the Holy Spirit, you're bringing Him with you. Amen? Raise your hand about that high. Say, thank you, Jesus. I'm excited about God. Amen? Shall we stay?